What's going on everybody? I'm Mecca coming at you here and uh, this is Driven Hard and this is going to be uh, a different, different video. No Range Rover. The Range Rover is still in the shop waiting in the final part um, as I film this so I should get it back this week. But I wanted to do a quick um, my thoughts on this Jaguar uh, sedan that I've had for the last two weeks. This is the XF, uh, it's the all wheel drive V6. And um, honestly, this has reminded me of why it's so fun to have a smaller car, a sedan. And uh, so I'll, I'll talk more about that, but uh, just wanna offer some of my thoughts. This is not gonna be like a professional style review or anything. Just some of the things I've noticed over the last two weeks um, driving this. So, Typical JLR uh, key, you get your lights. And uh, you know what, so let's just go straight to the back. Uh, this is probably standard on a lot of sedans in this day and age, but uh, power tailgate. We also love this little cargo, cargo thing that's in it. It's awesome. Um, so that's really cool. In love with this interior as well. Absolutely love this this red and black interior. Let's get in, start it up. So so that raises and the vents open. Need to get some gas. Now, I don't know if it's my mind or my eyes playing tricks on me, but I swear to God, the resolution seems worse. It seems better on the Range Rover, the resolution for the screen and for the dash. So I've noticed that in a couple of loaner cars I've got. But anyways, typical infotainment system there. Uh, we've got some solid buttons here, which I love. I love having a solid button for the auto start stop. So let's get into the things that I think they're kind of neat. So we got different driving modes here. So Eco and then ADSR. So this Jaguar, you can actually get it equipped with uh, two different ones. So it's like one is like a snow rain mode and then one is a little bit more advanced. Um, so this does have like in the Range Rover they call it or Land Rover calls it low traction launch. This is the same idea. So you can right and if we were in a low traction setting right like i guess you can't tell but you put your foot on the accelerator and like really it, it gradually goes down there um so well, let's take a look at some cool things here okay so it does have configurable dynamics so put this back into dynamic mode so it allows you with your typical dynamic or comfort for the engine steering gear, gear shift and suspension. Now what's, I was saying in one of my Instagram stories is what's cool is the steering. I definitely noticed the steering gets a lot tighter in dynamic compared to comfort. Um, and then the suspension in this, I can definitely feel it's a lot firmer when it's in dynamic versus comfort. Whereas the Range Rover, you don't really feel the difference unless you're really pushing it hard. Um, and then like your stopwatch, G-forces, you're driving a V6, you're not going to get a ton of Gs. And uh, there you go. Is this kind of cool? Is it gimmicky? I'm not really sure. The, I, I wouldn't call this like a performance sedan. Like I like having that because, you know, I'm a car geek. But, eh, you know. So I guess, I guess there's a place. Um, auto start, stop, like having the solid button there. In the Range Rover, you have to like go through menus to turn it off. Um, what else is cool? So, one thing I do wish, I wish you could put the map there. It only allows you to do the full map. Right, it doesn't allow you to do um, the map in that little area, like in the Range Rover. But typical, you know, you can put whatever you want there. Um, and then, yeah, 
these are just your typical yeah it's just typical stuff um one thing that I, I, I was i was hating the driver assistance so collision avoidance so the sensitivity is not located there the sensitivity is located here you don't have to be in that menu but um, maybe we have to exit out of all of that see forward alert so I actually had to read the manual to figure that out but the sensitivity is so much more sensitive than on the Range Rover on this so I've had to dial it down quite a bit and I've noticed there's been a couple times that I've been driving and I'm in one lane and then there's another car in the other lane and it picks up. It gives me a forward alert for the other car. So maybe that's a software issue or whatever the case is, but uh, yeah. Um, it does have heated and cooled seats for the uh, just, oh, look at that. Heated and heated seats for the rear passengers. So that's kind of cool. Um, get into your climate, you know, that's your, your standard stuff, I guess. Um, what else is neat? Hate this. Can't stand these things. Just absolutely hate them. Hate them, hate them, hate them. Hate them. Give me, give me a freaking stick. Give me like, I just, yeah. I'd rather drive with a freaking minivan column than that. Uh, I don't know. Um, okay. What else can I tell you? So sunroof, standard stuff, uh, motorized, right, for the back window. Yeah, what else? Like, other than that, like, there's really not a ton to, to this car. It does have, it does have, um, I did an Instagram story on this, um, all train progress control. I don't think that's what it's called here. But, uh, right, so by clicking set, you can increase or decrease your speed. And then if I take my foot off the, right? So I'm not doing any gas or anything right now. It's just gonna hold me at about one to two kilometers an hour. And this is ideal for like super slippery situations and stuff like that. No, this is not like, you know, dynamic cruise control or anything like that. Cause most cruise control systems only work above like 20 miles an hour. This is a low speed one. So that's like something right from Land Rover, which is kind of neat. Um, you know, it's, what else? Uh, we got storage, cup holders, parking brake, the regular stuff. Like it's not a super exciting car. I do like kind of the stitching this trim piece, but this is all like plastic, right? It's a what, about $40,000, $50,000 Canadian, I think. Right, calipers. Climate control for the rear seat. But yeah, it's been a fun little car. Um, it is a little rear bias when you're in dynamic mode with the all wheel drive system. Um, so that's kind of nice. Um, but yeah, you know, I guess if you like the shape, you like the design, you like the Jaguar uh, brand, this could be a great little family option for you. It's definitely small compared to like coming from the Range Rover. But um, in all honesty, like if I was looking and getting like a small sedan, it's not super small, but you know, this competes with what the three series, A4, I guess, I'd probably pick one of the German brands. Um, I think they're gonna be more exciting to drive. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Like I'm not a big fan of Jaguar. I like the styling. I like the interior. I like what they're doing with it. I just think there's better, op better options out there. Don't hate me if you have this car. It's cool. Power to you.
But, uh, yeah. You know, that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, you know, like I said, I just want to offer a few of my thoughts um, on this thing. Hopefully, I get the Range Rover back in a day or two and I can bring you guys up to speed with what happened with that thing. I kind of broke it again. But um, till next time, everybody, comment below. Let me know what you're thinking. And most importantly, what are you driving hard? Yeah.